Hello fellow Kerbernauts and KSP players. This is just a quick overview of how to use the zero point inline fairing system. Uh, before we get started, I just wanted to make a quick little tip here. If you look at this rocket that we have that's completed here, if at any time you want to see your payload and work on that directly, all you need to do is grab the base of the fairing and pull the entire rocket aside and you'll be able to work on your payload itself. And then when you're ready, you can just simply snap it back on. So to get started, what we'll do is take a quick look at what features we have. If you go to the aerodynamic tab, first you'll notice that there are several options here. And in fact, if you've got, got them arranged the way I do here, and it is the first mod that is loading, you'll notice that each row here is something different. The first row is the size one regular fairings. The second row is uh, size one extra wide fairings. And then we go on to the size two, which is the two and a half meter, starting with the flush fairings, then the regular fairings, then the extra wide, and then with all the only size three fairings we have are the flush fairings here. There's also some matching nose cones that are purely optional. Now you'll notice here I'm using a flush fairing on this, in this case. It doesn't stick out from the body of the rocket at all. So the flush fairings are just designed to do that. They are designed to continue the fuselage of your rocket upward uh, without expanding outward at all. Um, you'll also notice that as I was clicking here, if I take the nose cone away, the payload is exposed. Now, why would you want to do it this way versus the way I was showing earlier with pulling the entire rocket away? Well, that's going to depend a lot on how you construct your rocket. Uh, in this case, I only have a nose cone up above. You might have a much more complex rocket. Sometimes you might do something like an Apollo-style rocket where you have a command module and an entire external payload up above the fairing with your internal payload inside the fairing. So the difference between some of these fairings is a little bit different here. I'll show you how this works. In this case, I was using the flush fairing. Uh, if I want to, I could use a wider fairing, such as this one here. This is the regular width. And it's just called that because it is somewhere between the flush fairings and the extra wide ones. And you'll notice that this one is indeed wider. And it comes up and forms a nice angle here with the with the nose cone. However, if we decided that we don't like the stock nose cones, we could al also use, in this case, we would need the size two regular fairing cone. And we can snap that on. And you can see that this one is designed to cover over the diagonal portion of the fairing that is normally exposed using a normal nose cone. We also have scaled up versions of these for the extra wide fairings. If I pull the, this fairing away and replace it with the uh, extra wide one, you'll see that this is actually a very wide fairing. In fact, the width of this, starting from the two and a half meter size, this one nearly doubles, actually more than doubles, the diameter of the, uh, of the amount of space you have to work with here. This is actually a six meter wide fairing. So you can fit quite a lot in the way of a payload inside of here. You can put radially attached equipment and fuel tanks. Uh, you can store entire landers inside of this uh, fairly easily, I would think. Now, the, all of the fairings that I've been showing you here have been the short versions of these fairings. If I pull back a little bit here to accommodate this, I'm gonna pull this nose cone back off. I'm going to switch to the tall version of the very same fairing. You can see it's quite a bit taller. And once again, we always look for that floating node up here to attach our nose cone or external payload. And that's all it takes. You put this attachment on the top, whether it's a, another section of rocket or just a nose cone, and the fairings will appear automatically. Now you might see here that there are some seams. This is where the fairings will break apart. All of these fairings are designed to break apart into four sections and the fairing base will actually act as a decoupler for whatever is attached above. If we attach a, uh, another payload of some kind up here or just a nose cone, it doesn't really matter. Uh, when you stage this, it will detach whatever is above. Now for the moment, I'm gonna put this rocket back together the way it was, and I will find a different nose cone. In fact, let me go ahead and put a two meter, two and a half meter uh, nose cone back on here. And you can see there's quite a bit of a size difference going from the, those very large uh, fairings down to these uh, much smaller ones. Now this decoupler here, if I mouse over it, you can see that it corresponds to this one over here on the right. 
and if we were to stage that particular icon then that's where all the fairings would come apart but you'll have to remember to use your own decoupler underneath the payload and I have one right here because otherwise your payload will remain attached to the fairing base and that's pretty much it that's a grand tour of how the fairings are assembled and used in the vehicular assembly building uh, you'll find the use of them out in the field to be fairly typical and if you're used to decouplers at all, which I'm assuming you are, then this should be fairly straightforward. I hope you enjoyed this quick little overview, and thanks for watching, and enjoy the mod. Have fun! Thanks!